In the not-too-distant future, enigmatic entities emerge from the unknown, unleashing chaos and decimating humanity. This cataclysmic event leaves few survivors. Speculations about the cause abound, perhaps a viral contagion spread by insects, an enigmatic purple mist, or even divine retribution. Yet, these remain mere conjectures without concrete evidence. Paul scavenges for supplies in a seemingly deserted town in this desolate world. His routine is abruptly interrupted by the blare of sirens, forcing him to dash through the shadowy streets, evading lurking dangers marked by distant screams and explosions. Amidst the darkness of smoke, Paul finds sanctuary in a secluded house on the town's edge, a haven for him and his two children, whom he raises single-handedly. Fifteen years later, Paul's children have matured into robust teenagers. They continue to inhabit this hideout, venturing daily to gather essentials, always cautious to return by dusk. Joseph diligently secures the house at sunset while their loyal dog, Rocco, senses the urgency to retreat indoors. One evening, as darkness falls, Paul anxiously awaits Thomas, who arrives late. Thomas justifies his delay with assistance at the neighboring Rose family's farm. Nevertheless, Paul sternly warns him against future tardiness, stressing the dangers beyond their safe zone. Amidst the tension, a sibling quarrel erupts between Thomas and Joseph, quickly escalating into a physical altercation. Paul intervenes, reminding them of their humanity in a world threatening to strip them of it. Post-dinner, the evening winds down with a chess game, but the peace is shattered when Rocco reacts aggressively toward a disturbance beneath the floor. Sensing danger, Paul and Thomas rush to investigate and confront a violent assault on their doorstep by the mysterious creatures. The door withstands several fierce attempts by the creatures before they eventually retreat. After the ordeal, Thomas criticizes Joseph for his inaction, but Joseph explains he was analyzing the attacks to understand the creatures' tactics. Observing the weakened door the following day, Paul leads his sons in fortifying their sanctuary, determined to safeguard their dwindling peace of tranquility in a world besieged by unknown horrors. Under gentle pressure from Paul, Joseph confesses he's been constructing a vehicle to escape their constrained, fearful existence. Unfortunately, his efforts have been unsuccessful. Impressed by the initiative, Paul inspects the makeshift car and swiftly makes a few adjustments, miraculously getting it to function. Overjoyed, Paul takes the teens out for a driving lesson, roaming freely for the first time in ages. They return from their adventure, and Paul emphasizes securing their home further. He tasks the boys with retrieving additional materials from the river. Frustrated, Thomas protests, expecting to visit the farm that day, but Paul insists on prioritizing their safety. As they drive to the river, tension mounts in the car. Thomas accuses Joseph of being the reason for the change in plans, believing Paul sent them together solely for Joseph's protection. Defiant and feeling suffocated by the overprotection, Thomas demands to be dropped off at the farm, instructing Joseph to collect him later. Meanwhile, Paul strengthens the door at home and then retreats to a nearby waterfall for a solitary smoke. While there, he discovers a sinister, dark crevice within the rocks, sparking his curiosity and apprehension. At the river, Joseph secures himself to the car and descends into the bowels of an abandoned ship, searching for supplies. Amid the relics of the past, he stumbles upon an old pinup from a magazine, a stark reminder of the world they've lost. His search is abruptly interrupted by a swarm of aggressive insects erupting from a heap of debris, forcing him to make a hasty retreat. Thomas assists with the chores at the farm, but it soon becomes evident that his genuine interest lies with Charlotte, the farmer's daughter. Their mutual attraction is palpable as they stroll through the fields. Charlotte reveals a childhood memory, showing Thomas a rope tied to a tree. She explains that as a child, she was only allowed to play outside while attached to the tree, so she would tie herself to it to maximize her freedom within the limits. They spend the afternoon sharing whimsical theories about the apocalyptic event, each more outlandish than the last, finding solace in each other's company amidst the uncertainty surrounding them. As Thomas departs, Charlotte embraces him tightly. With dusk approaching, the urgency for the brothers to return home intensifies. Back at the house, Paul's anxiety mounts when he discovers Rocco alone, with no sign of his sons. Meanwhile, Joseph struggles with a stubborn car that eventually roars to life after several attempts. Thomas, 
running to make it home before dark, stumbles and falls into a hidden crevice. Unaware of Thomas's predicament, Joseph passes by the area without spotting his brother and heads home. Upon arriving, he recounts the events to Paul, who instructs him to secure the house while he and Rocco venture out to find Thomas. In the aperture, Thomas regains consciousness, his body aching. As he explores with a lighter, he encounters a terrifying creature attempting to breach the wall. The creature emits a piercing screech, alerting Paul and Rocco. Bravely, Thomas uses a small knife to fend off the beast, forcing it back through the wall. Yet, his relief is short-lived as another monster emerges above and clutches his face, suffocating him. Just in time, Paul intervenes, pulling the creature away and swiftly ending its threat. Ensuring Thomas is unharmed, Paul discovers a tunnel linking directly to the aperture. Given the peril of navigating the forest at night, they decide to shelter in the crevice until dawn, barricading the entrance. The sound of creatures burrowing underground fills the air, and the ground trembles as they begin to block the exit with dirt. Amid the chaos, Paul prepares a flare, anticipating an attack. As a creature reaches through an emerging hole, Paul ignites the flare, causing an explosion that injures him, too. Back at the house, the structure creaks ominously. Armed with a plan, Joseph ties a rope to his chair by the door and feigns sleep. A creature tests his vigilance by extending a claw through a gap in the door. It ventures inside when it deems Joseph asleep, only to be trapped as Joseph springs his trap, dropping a cage from the ceiling. Feeling triumphant yet exhausted, Joseph drapes a blanket over the captured creature and drifts to sleep. The following day, with no sign of Paul or Thomas, a concerned Joseph takes the car to search for them. Meanwhile, having cleared the blocked entrance, Thomas assists his severely injured father out of the aperture. Alert and protective, Rocco leads Joseph to them with the car's sound. Together, the brothers carefully transport Paul back to their home. As they deliberate on their next steps, Thomas curiously peeks under the blanket covering the captured creature, which reacts violently. Joseph quickly replaces the blanket, explaining that the creatures are sensitive to light, revealing a vital weakness. Afterward, they attend to Paul's injuries while Joseph shares his observations, the creature had entered their home in just eight seconds the previous night, the quickest intrusion yet. He also suspects the presence of a second creature that retreated. The alarming adaptability of these beings troubles Joseph, leading him to speculate that something is profoundly amiss. On the other hand, Thomas attributes their intelligence to strategic retaliation, recalling a recent encounter in a cave where many creatures were killed. He suggests they might have targeted their home out of vengeance, especially since such incursions at the Rose family farm were rare. Despite this, Joseph is convinced that only Paul has managed to kill any of the creatures. To understand the creatures better, Thomas attempts to execute one they had captured, ignoring Joseph's pleas to preserve it for study. The ensuing scuffle frees the creature, swiftly concealing itself under a bed. It emerges only when provoked by Rocco's barking, transforming aggressively, but Joseph manages to pin it down, allowing Thomas to decapitate it with an axe. Despite the grim turn of events, Joseph drags the carcass to the barn for dissection, hoping to glean insight into its anatomy, though his efforts reveal little. Concerned for their father's worsening condition, Thomas suggests relocating Paul to the Rose Farm, which boasts superior facilities and medical supplies. Joseph remains skeptical about receiving any aid from the Roses, but Thomas insists, compelling his brother to accompany them. Upon arrival, they find the Roses unwilling to expend scarce medical resources on Paul. Charlotte, their daughter, objects to her parents' decision but is overruled. However, they permit Thomas to stay, believing it might alleviate resource strain at Paul and Joseph's home. Disheartened, Joseph leaves abruptly, prompting Thomas to follow, which escalates into a heated confrontation, blaming Thomas for their father's dire state. The argument reaches a physical crescendo, with Thomas momentarily throttling Joseph, but he quickly recoils in horror at his actions. Joseph, filled with urgency, returns to the car and drives away with their unconscious father, leaving Thomas behind at the farm. During his stay, Charlotte offers Thomas genuine kindness and shares personal items, leading to a tender moment interrupted only by her father's stern interruption. Meanwhile, Joseph notices unsettling signs back home, 
sheep scattering in panic and unusual mounds of dirt, suggesting the creature's subterranean movements. Upon his return, a dirt trail near their home confirms his worst fears, the creatures might tunnel beneath their sanctuary. After attending to his father, Joseph heads to the barn to devise a new strategy. As he moves through the house, he begins to barricade the windows. During his efforts, he stumbles and falls through a concealed hole hidden under a carpet, confirming his worst fears, the monsters have infiltrated their sanctuary. Meanwhile, at the farm, Charlotte catches Thomas rummaging through the kitchen. Concerned for his father's health, he is desperate to find medicine. Charlotte hands him what he needs, and in a moment of gratitude, he embraces her, promising to return, unaware they are being overheard. As Thomas hastily exits, he is confronted at the gate by a farmhand who, gun aimed, accuses him of theft. Thomas insists that Charlotte provided the medicine, but his pleas fall on deaf ears. The workers forcibly drag him to the barn, binding him and blaring music to mask the impending violence. Just as one of the men prepares to shoot Thomas' legs, the ground beneath him collapses. He tumbles into the hole, his shot going awry. The other workers rush to his aid, just as a creature emerges from the new chasm. Back in the main house, the disturbance awakens Charlotte's parents. Her father, carrying a candle, investigates the noise only to be attacked by another creature. The candle drops, igniting a fire, as the beast lunges from the father to the mother. The father struggles to fend off the beast, allowing the mother a chance to escape, but the creature catches her too, transforming before assaulting her. Charlotte, barricaded in her room, hears the terror unfold. When silence finally settles, she emerges to a gruesome scene, a trail of blood leading to the bathroom, where she discovers the creature with her mother's corpse. In the barn, chaos ensues as the men battle the encroaching creatures. One by one, they fall victim to the monstrous assault. As the barn ignites, Thomas breaks free from his restraints, using the commotion to his advantage. As a creature advances on him, Charlotte intervenes, gunning it down. The teens then flee to the blazing house. Upon seeing her home engulfed in flames, Charlotte reveals her parents' fate. Resolved, they decide to head to Thomas' home for safety. Back at the house, Joseph frantically seals the hole with furniture to delay the creatures. After ensuring his father is still unconscious but stable, he prepares for the imminent threat. Thomas and Charlotte burst through the door as he braced for more creatures. Relieved yet overwhelmed, Joseph admits he needs their help. Their reunion is cut short as Paul regains consciousness, urging his sons to continue the fight. Joseph outlines a desperate plan for the group. They scavenge for gasoline in the barn to fortify their defenses while Rocco remains highly alert. The group then secures an old freezer in the house and reinforces the remaining windows. Joseph constructs a barricade of furniture doused in gasoline, setting the stage for a fiery standoff. Furthermore, he strategically places every explosive item he can find atop the precarious barrier, including one of his father's slowly burning cigarettes. As tension mounts, the barricade begins to tremble just as a creature descends through the chimney into Paul's vicinity. Concurrently, another beast emerges from the hole, and as it passes a doorway, Thomas ambushes it, driving his knife into its back. The creature retaliates, but Thomas swiftly reclaims his knife and delivers a fatal blow to its skull. Charlotte confronts a third monster in another part of the house, efficiently taking it down with a well-aimed shot. The siblings quickly regroup with Joseph, and they attempt to move the freezer to block the entry but are startled as the door swings open to reveal a bloodied Paul, triumphant over the chimney intruder. He grabs Charlotte's gun and fires through the floor, attempting to reach the creatures below. Despite his efforts, a massive horde soon emerges, charging towards him. Paul's quick thinking leads him to kick the foremost creature, causing a collapse that sends most tumbling through the weakened floor, though a few persist. The teenagers spring into action, eliminating the remaining threats, and their effective collaboration earns Paul's admiration. With immediate danger averted, they and Rocco seek refuge in the freezer. Instead of joining them, Paul seals the door, opting to confront the threat alone to buy his children time. Inside the freezer, the siblings huddle together as Paul confronts a new wave of creatures. The accumulated explosives distract them until the accumulated explosives ignite, 
resulting in a catastrophic blast that brings down the house. The explosion propels the freezer across the terrain until it finally halts. The teens emerge, frantically searching the rubble for any sign of Paul, only to be ambushed by another fiery creature. A harrowing chase ensues, ending only when Charlotte, finding her bullets ineffective, uses her gun as a bludgeon to dismantle the creature. After escaping the immediate danger, they stop miles away under the pristine night sky, marveling at stars unseen due to their nocturnal confinement. Come morning, the group solemnly returns to the ruins of their home. Deciding against rebuilding the past, they retrieve any usable supplies and conduct a heartfelt ceremony to honor their fallen, marking a poignant farewell. Resolved to forge a new beginning, the teens and Rocco drive towards the valley, hopeful of finding sanctuary among the farms. This is a testament to their resilience and undying hope amidst chaos.